Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a comparison between my Pachette Matisse Proenza Schooler PS1 and my Proenza Schooler PS1 Tiny. So this was asked on, I think on my Q&A, if I was gonna do a comparison, and I thought that that would be a really good idea. I was already thinking about doing it, but yeah, so I've been trying to think of things that I need to mention about these three because I remember when I first got my Pro Ends of Schooler, everyone was like, how does it compare to the Pichet Matisse? And I didn't know because I didn't have one, but I knew from like looking at them. But now that I've carried all of these, there is quite a difference in all of these. And there's like some pros for all of them and some cons for all of them. So. I wanted to see if I could make a video that's maybe not too long, kind of talking about all of them. So the first one is going to be the Pochette Matisse, and let me just give you the sizes of all of them. This one is 10 inches by about almost 8 inches, and then this does open more, but at the size it is right now, it's a little bit under 4 inches, actually over 4 inches. The tiny PS1 is going to be about 11 inches by about 7. And then the thickness of this one, this one does not get much thicker than this, is going to be about 5. Now for the biggest one of all is going to be the regular PS1. And this one is 12 and a half by about eight and a half. And then this one does get a little bit wider than it is right now, and this one's about six. So obviously the sizes are like close, yet different. I think the closest of them is gonna be between the tiny and the regular um, Pachette Matisse. Now obviously a giant difference is gonna be the prices. This one is like 2300 I know I hate saying that out loud. Um, this one is about 19 and this one's around I believe 980 Now this one comes in different size or different kind of styles. Um, I know that some have a zip on the back. This one doesn't. This one just has a pocket. Um, some have like a zip around thing on it and I don't know but Anyway, this is one that I have and I absolutely love it. It's so cute. It's got the same buckle closure, which I never do these things, but it's got the same little buckle thing as the regular PS1 has. Let me show you up close. So it goes like this and then you just pull it down and it pops open. So that one's pretty easy. I've been asked a lot if these are really hard to do and like, no, that's how easy that is. And to open it up. Very easy. And the fact that they hang, you know, they've got clips on the side just like the Pachette Matisse does. So whenever you're open, opening this, even if you end up not closing it, it can just hang like this. You don't have to worry about it. Whereas if you remember when I had the Clapton, the things had to hang from here. And some other bags do that too. And that makes it a pain if you want to close them because you don't have anything for them to hang from. So yeah. Um... Anyway, my, I have the iPhone 7 and that fits back here perfect, but if you have anything bigger, it's not going to fit. Um, with the Pachette Matisse, my iPhone 7 fits back here too, and I think if you have a plus, because this is the size of this one, I think a plus would fit too. I'm not 100% sure, but this is pretty large back here, so I would kind of think it would. And then obviously, the PS1 has a giant zipper in the back, so... If you wanted to put any phone back there, absolutely any phone's gonna work. So, the next thing, oh, the closure on this one. So, I showed you the closure on these. Let me pull these out. How, you know, they're easy and everything. Um, now, people complain about the closure of the Pachette Matisse. When I've used it, I haven't had a single problem. I have people say that they hit this and it just pops open. I haven't had that happen either. But if, as you just saw me doing this, if you try to close it and you don't have it full, it doesn't really close. Now, I don't know. 
I always carry too much where that's never been a problem for me. Anytime I've tried to close it, it's never been a problem. But if you carry less than I do and you want to close it, it, it it's, it's just hard. That time was easy, but it's never that easy. Um, but yeah, I love them all. But anyway, this one has a really good closure on it too. Now, for them, their top handles. That one is going to be a win for the PS1s because both of these have longer handles. So you can put your arm under this one like this. The same as this one, but the Pachette Matisse is only like this. So if you're carrying by the top handle, you can only grab the top. Your hand can fit in there like that, I guess. I don't know anybody that carries their bag around like this. But you're not going to be able to put it on the crook of your arm and carry it if you want to, whereas you can on those because they have nice taller top handles. So I love the top handles of those and I do find that when I carry this one I carry it more on the crook of my arm. When I carry the tiny I tend to wear it on my shoulder and then whenever I've been wearing the Pachette Matisse if I use the strap that it came with which is just this leather strap um, I do a crossbody but if I use my bandolier strap I just hang it on my shoulder and that's my favorite way to wear that one. Um, now, the Pro Ends of Schooler one, whenever you buy these, I've heard a lot of people say that they come with this in a knot, and um, I've watched unboxings and that's how they come, but I don't remember if when I bought this if it came like that or not, but when I was given this one, it was not like that, but um, I tried hanging it and it, it fits me crossbody perfect, but I loved after I knotted this. Oh my gosh, I love to wear it like that. It just hangs so perfect. It like hits right above my hip and it's super comfortable. So I love it. The Louis Vuitton one? Uh, maybe because it's just so expensive, I can't do it. I cannot get myself to tie this one. And this strap is not nearly as comfortable as these straps. Um, I don't like love the strap on them, but I don't know. I don't love it maybe on my PS1, but I do love it on the tiny. But I don't like the one from Louis Vuitton at all. I think for this being such an expensive bag, this is not comfortable. Um, when I wear a crossbody, I mean, it's a comfortable bag. It's not heavy or anything, but I think just because of this leather, I don't know. I just feel like it cuts into my clavicle and it's not comfortable. <clears throat> and it's not like it's overpacked or anything because I don't carry that much in here, but it's just, I don't know. I just, I don't like the strap, so as far as strap goes, the win would go to the PS1 bags. Okay, now let's talk about interiors. The interior of the Tiny is, just looks like this, it's a one big pocket and then it's got a small zip pocket back here. And then it has this front pocket, which, oh, I've got a, I've got a chapstick in there. Um, that one's a pretty good size. It's like that, but it, and it's also got a, it just closed itself. It's got a little snap closure kind of thing, a magnet, magnetic closure, and it's, it's pretty tight. Um, so it's got quite a bit of room there. The regular PS1, this is in the medium size, I don't know if I said that. It has... Look in here, I've got a Louis Vuitton dust bag and another Louis Vuitton dust bag. Like, I don't even know why those are in there. I've also got two different straps. I've got the regular one right here that it came with. Then I've got my husband's Louis Vuitton bandolier strap in there too. Anyway, so inside the medium size is a big old hole. It's got this weird little thing that can magnetic close to this. I've never, ever done it. I actually don't see the point of it, but that's there. It's got a nice big zipper pocket that, you know, takes up the whole side. And then it's got another zip pocket on the outside here, which you can put a lot of stuff in there. And then it's also got that same pocket out here. It's got that, see if you can see that right there. It's got that pocket that is also huge. And I've got my cozy and chic pen that lives in here. So, this one has a ton of space, <laughs> clearly. Let's go to the Louis Vuitton. Inside this one, you have got one small pocket in the back, one medium pocket in the front, and then your largest pocket is in the middle. 
so you don't have a ton of like you've got organization but you don't have like any hidden zipper pockets or anything like that inside there everything is just in there but now the good thing that I found out about this one or that I found when I've used it is the back it, it's a smaller pocket but I don't think it's as small as everyone thinks like you you think just looking at pictures because you just can't get the right like even up close like that you just can't tell but it's got it's got a good amount. So from the seam of the actual of this thing all the way to the wall of the bag is a good inch. Like it's a good inch. So that's more space than you think. And if you're, you know, sticking more in there, it's going to open. So what I found with using it is I like to tuck things in there. Like I put dollar bills, I put my hair dealies, I put stuff like that. I can just shove it back there. And I did knock this bag over in my car. I didn't close it and I hit my brakes and it just fell over as they tend to do. And stuff fell out of these two pockets, but everything in here stayed put. So while it might not be like a hidden pocket it's more secure than I thought that it was so yeah um gosh these are just so hard okay let's talk about what fits in them or what I've found kind of fits in them so okay we'll start with this one whenever I use it I pretty much can fit in a Victorine wallet my regular glasses I can fit in um what else do I put in here? My pochette, my mini pochette. I put hair, like I put, um, what are they called? Scrunchies in there. My cell phone in the back. My perfume, but I just had the Louis Vuitton long travel perfume, so it's not like a big bottle. That's literally all I put in there. And then if I wear my sunglasses in somewhere, I put them on top and then I throw my um, keys in the middle pocket. So literally that's all that fits. I remember we went in somewhere and Cam took in a toy and asked me to put it in there and I was like, I can't, it doesn't fit. That, so that's literally all that fits in there. So that really means you have to downsize. Um, the same would go with this one. I can fit all of that in here, except if I also wanted to put, you know, something else small, I'd probably be able to fit like a few extra things. Like I could probably put like a round coin purse. Um, I can fit my camera in here. Now, my camera does not fit in here, and I have this Sony A5000 or Sony A5100, something like that, but it's it's a good camera, but it's a little bit thicker, and it does not fit in the Pachette Matisse. Whether I have things in there or not, it does not fit. It does fit in here, so I can put it in here sideways, and it goes in perfect. And everything that I said is in the Pachette Matisse. If I have all of that in here, I can fit all that plus my camera. So this one, even with it looking smaller, this one holds more than this one does. Now, the PS1, you can fit everything in here, like everything. And I love that it's got all this organization to it. So whenever I carry this, I put my phone in the very back like always, and that's all I ever put in those. And then in the front here, I put like blotting sheets, I put the perfume that I'm using, I usually put, um, well, when I carried my pocket organizer, I put that in this pocket, but with my Victorine, I wouldn't. So I would put that in here. You could fit sunglasses. I could fit my camera. You can literally fit anything. This holds close to what the Speedy 30 fits because not only does it have all these compartments, so you don't need to carry a ton of little bags with you, but it's huge. Like this thing is a pretty good size. Like it's pretty decent size and you know, it gets bigger. And it's easier to close this one and it to expand than it is the Pachette Matisse because this leather is a lot softer. That's just how it came. It was a lot softer. The Pachette, Pachette Matisse one isn't as soft as I thought it was going to be. I kind of had this idea that the leather was going to be soft yet structured. I don't know. I can't really explain it. And I mean, while it is like malleable and everything and it's not super stiff, it's not like this one where it's just, I don't know. It's amazing. Um, wear and tear. Okay, so that the, this one definitely wins for what fits in it. But wear and tear. I don't know the wear and tear of the Pochette Matisse yet because I haven't had it long enough. But I can say if you were to like compare all this to a canvas one, the canvas one's not going to have great wear. At least from everybody that I've ever talked to that has one, um, they've always said that you know if they actually use their bags, they wear really really bad. Now if you're talking to someone that's got like 
a million different bags and they switch out of them all the time like I've seen a lot of people do and they try to do wear and tears on them you're like you don't even use that like come on you've used it like twice don't listen to theirs because I think they're full of crap but people that actually use their bags would say that for the for the most part they do have really bad wear on the canvas ones um, for the emprunt ones I have heard a few people say that they have had glazing issues but I have to say for the most part people have said that it has worn really well I've heard a lot of people say I've used it every day for a year and you can't even see any wear on it and for Louis Vuitton items lately that's amazing now for the pro-ins of schooler ones I've never heard anybody say anything bad about them like honestly never and this one you know I have used a ton and still the glazing is perfect and yeah I think that part of it has to do with so you know how the pochette matisse when you like it looks like this and it's just one piece that goes like this so it's kind of inevitable that it's eventually going to have problems and that would pretty much be because this piece right here I don't know how to explain this one but this piece right here so that'd be the inside of this meets with the outside so this piece of leather right here meets with this piece and they put glazing to put them together glazing and stitching and so when you're going to open and close this eventually this part connecting to the back is going to somehow separate because the glazing is just going to do that with the pro ends of schooler they did it a lot smarter and louis vuitton should have learned from them because see how this is still accordion and this is still its own piece so whereas the Louis Vuitton would be one piece that goes like this, the Prince of Schooler is not. It is one piece that goes around, but the back of the bag is another piece of leather. So where it meets right here, you don't have to worry about one piece like meeting and turning. Instead, you've got one piece that goes straight up and then the other one starts here and turns. So over time, it's not going to wear the same because this is already separated. Like you see how that's like made separate like it's made separated so it's not like it's gonna eventually separate it gives you that room to just flap it over and for it to already be separated so you don't have to worry about there being wear and tear there and I think that's perfect and I mean come on the fact that I've used this so much and has like no no wear on it whatsoever like you'd never even know this wasn't a brand new bag if I were to like take it into a store pretend like you would never even be able to tell I used it like no way Nordstrom would definitely take this back because it looks brand new I'm not going to because I love it but yeah uh, those are, I just love all of, I love those bags and I mean this one I haven't gotten to wear it as much because I haven't owned it as long but I mean it's made the same way where it's you know one piece here another piece here and it's just it looks perfect like the leather on these are amazing so yeah um, after comparing those I would honestly say the best one would be the Proenza Schooler PS1 I mean it holds a ton more like pretend you wanted to throw a scarf in there you know you have a kid's small toy you want to put a snack in there your camera in there just like any of that stuff absolutely everything is pretty much gonna fit in this and you don't have to worry about it having issues I have had it get rained on I know a lot of people like don't get them wet I don't take this one out on purpose because my friend that gave it to me was like don't get wet and I just I don't want to do that because that's what she said so I don't I make sure if it's raining this thing stays in its room like I don't take it out but I have gotten my other one wet before just because I was out and I, I couldn't help it and it's perfectly fine I haven't gotten this one wet yet but <laughs> try not to I guess it's just so freaking expensive I don't want to mess it up but I refuse to baby it but I think that if it does get wet I think that it'll be fine but with all the pros of the PS1 I would say that that is such a winner and you know if you find it on sale somewhere like like Nordstrom for example if you do get on sale like I did like they price matched it's it's really nice to know that if something does happen um, Nordstrom would take it back but also Prince of Schooler will fix the bag and from what I've heard it's the lifetime of the bag now I don't know if that's 100% true but that's what I've been told 
and while most Nordstrom's don't seem to have them in store anymore, you can order them on the website and then if anything goes wrong, they will ship them off for you. That's a winner. Louis Vuitton, on the other hand, for the most part, will not. They will probably <laughs> blame you if there's an issue and they can't, well actually I don't know if they can fix leather. This is the only leather one I've had, so oh, here it just. So if I've had, if you have any issues with the leather, I don't know what they do. I know that they will reglaze it if you have a glazing issue, but I don't know if they fix leather. I know they can't fix canvas, but I honestly don't know about the leather. If you do know, please let me know because I actually, I have no idea. I don't know what they would do about the leather. But I mean, they're all beautiful bags and I love them all and I'm really happy that I have them all and I'm going to use all of them. But if I had to pick one that I say is the better choice to buy, it would be the Proenza Schooler just because of the way it's made, the quality of the leather, the quality of the bag all together, and then also the fact that they will repair stuff and all that other kind of things. But that's all I can do for the review right now. I can't say too much more for the Pachette Matisse because I haven't owned it long enough, but I can only say positives about the Proenza Schooler. Um, well, no, the one negative would be I don't think that the strap is that wonderful. Sorry, I didn't show you that part. And that's because while this is substantial feeling, like weight and everything, this is what it looks like. And it kind of reminds me of the Balenciaga straps. I just don't think that they're that awesome because, like, why does it have to have that kind of a clasp? Like, why can't it be, like... This is my husband's bandolier strap, but like how nice these look, just with that kind of closure instead. And then my Louis Vuitton, the one that came with my Bichette Matisse, looks just like that. And I just think they look nicer. I definitely think probably the straps for the Prenza Schooler will last longer. I don't know if these end up chipping off, if the gold looking stuff on here will chip off but yeah it's the only downfall kind of is the strap for the PS1 but it's not really that bad but if you have any questions or comments on any of them just let me know down below and I will try my best to help you um I know I've done what's in my bags in all of them so I don't kind of want to show you on all those because I've done it on all of them but I will answer any questions that you have and try to help you out um and I'll see you guys next time bye